Namaste. So today is a beautiful day. Finally got some good weather and it's Pongal, which is a big holiday in South India. All the shops are closed. And um, so I'm cooking myself up a big bowl of pasta with bean sauce. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, <laughs> now don't ask for me to do cooking videos. <laughs> Anyhow, um, this is about chapter 26 of Lakshmi Tantra, which you should watch first before watching this. And it's about the seven vidyas. Well, what are the seven vidyas? Tara or Aum, Tarika or Hring, Anutarika or Shring, Ain, Kling, Sauho or Aho, and Kshring. <laughs> These are the seven vidyas. Now, what do they mean? Well, let's let Lakshmi explain each one of them. The primary state, the absolute Brahman, subtle and with Shakti, who is as yet motionless and unmanifested, is the base on which Tara, Aum, expands into the extensive ways of creation. The first manifestation of the absolute Brahman Bhavat, the existing, the Supreme Self, contains both Bhavat and Bhava, the state of existence. Tarika, Hring, inheres therein. Now, this is why Hring is such a powerful mantra. Aum contains everything, but it's unmanifest, non-dual. So there's really no distinctions, no manifestations or objects. But in Hring, Hring differentiates between being and the state of being, bhava and bhavat. So this is a very important distinction. This is the root of duality and hence the basis on which all manifestation has to take place. Now, later at the end of the chapter, she says, These vidyas, such as Anuttara, etc., are to be regarded as the rays of the vidya in the form of Tarika, Hring, and so they consist of Tarika. Those who worship this Tarika vidya, according to the ritual precepts, enjoy imperishable pleasures both in this life and in the life to come imperishable pleasures. See, these aren't material. These results from chanting this mantra, Hring, are non-material because they're imperishable. And as we know, everything material is temporary. <laughs> so it can't really count. But these benefits are imperishable, so they have to be spiritual. And what are they? States of being that are close to the self. I've experienced these in my, in my limited experience, so far only two years with this mantra. Uh, and this is explained very nicely in the Maha Shodashi Mantra series, but I'll explain it again. That one achieves through this mantra a state of being of subtle, body that has no beginning or end because it's in relationship with the Supreme Brahman. This is a great important point. Right now, this body, this temporary body, is in relationship with the earth and the sun and nature and all that. And all that is temporary. It's born. It has a beginning. So it also has an end. But the subtle body is not like that. I mean, the most subtle body, the Ananda Maya Kosha, is never born because it's pure consciousness. And pure consciousness has no beginning. 
and therefore no end. So as long as we are in relationship with the Supreme Brahman, which means Lakshmi Narayana, as long as we have a relationship with them, there is no death. Try to understand, we transcend death. That's the power of these mantras. So then the next one is Anutarika, Shring, inheres in the inner state called Shanta, which is Brahman's first descent caused by its creative urge that is chiefly characterized by existence. O Vasava, Bijas such as Vagbhava, etc., exist in the second descent of the reality called Shakti, wherein Bhava, the creative state of existence, abounds. This Bija, Ain, is the source of creation and is known as Vagbhava. Now listen to the description of the Shakti known as Kundalini, which contains the entire creation coiled in a concentrated form and which is identical with Shabda Shakti, the power of sound. So Ain is also a very powerful bija. Ain is notably used in the uh, Guru Gayatri mantra. Ain Guru Devaya Vidmehe, huh? and then so on. It's a secret mantra. It's only given to initiates. But the Guru Gayatri mantra begins with the bija Ain. And this is because this bija contains the whole creation. It's Kundalini. And Kundalini is the actual guru within. So when Kundalini rises, then one gets enlightenment. And the next one, the fifth vidya, otherwise called Kama Bija, produces the fulfillment of desires. This is the great Shakti of Pradyumna. Learn her form from me. Thus I have revealed both the form and the might of Kama Bija, clean. So everybody has desires and everybody wants to get the fulfillment of those desires. So the mantra for that is clean. Now see, all these mantras are present in the Mahasodashi mantra. So if we simply chant that mantra, we get all the benefits of all, at least the first six vidyas. What's the next one? The sixth bija is the Saraswati Vidya Bija. Now listen to my account of that. She, this mantra who is verily myself, arising from Aprameya, contains great bliss and is auspicious and as a container of knowledge. Thus, the sixth vidya, Auhu, or in some lineages, Sauhu, has been duly recounted to you. This Sauhu or Auhu bija also occurs in Mahashodashi. And finally, there's this mysterious bija, Kshmring. <laughs> Just the sound of it is very powerful. The seventh vidya, Mahalakshmi vidya bija, is the source for satisfying all the four aims of human life, artha, kama, dharma, and moksha, both individually and collectively, and is capable of accomplishing anything. While performing japa with this bija, kshmring, the adept should envision me as settled in vyomesha, ang, and engaged in the phase of creative activity through the brilliance of my own power. But now, getting back to the other three bijas between the aung, hring, and shring, and the final bija, kshmring, there are three bijas, Ain, Kling, and Auhu, or Sauhu. This mantra complex, Vidya, consisting of the trio of bijas, is referred to as Tripura, 
When it is practiced first in Vyutkrama, reverse order, and then in Anukrama, the regular order, it also brings about identity with the self. This Vidya, when successfully practiced with Japa and Homa, by repetition of the mantras and fire ceremony, is said to fulfill all desires. Now, what could be better than this? Huh? And in the Mahashodashi mantra, these mantras are present, these bijas are present in both the forward and reverse forms. Because the mantra goes Aum, Shring, Hring, Kling, Ein, Sauhu. And then the Panchadashi mantra is the heart of the mantra, and then after it, Sauhu, Ein, Kling. See? The reverse order. So it's present in both forward and reverse order in the Mahasodasi mantra. And we strongly advise everyone to learn this mantra and get initiated properly with the Atma Bija so that you can chant this mantra and anybody who tries it even for a short time is just reporting wonderful results and benefits. And so you should do that too. That's our gift to you on this auspicious day of Pangal. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.